Attention business owners and managers. Are you determined to make 2019 your best year yet? Are you tired of not showing up online where people are searching? Are you overwhelmed by digital marketing? If you answered yes to these, stop. Write this down and after the podcast, get help. Go to SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com slash Cheryl Reeve. Glory Ramsey and Successful Marketing Group will help you get found, get customers, and build your dreams. Her results are proof. After the podcast, go to SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com slash Cheryl Reeve and sign up for a free 45-minute phone call and action plan with Glory. Make 2019 a huge success. Exciting news for the Cheryl Reeve Show. We'll be doing live shows again. The next live show will be March 20th, 6 p.m. at The Poor House. The Poor House in Minneapolis is a great setup. They have a stage. They're used to putting on shows, uh, and now they're kind of venturing into uh, affiliating themselves with the Lynx and uh, local basketball and the sports world, and we're really looking forward to it. If you haven't seen it, I'm sure you've seen it. If you've been downtown Minneapolis, it's walking distance from Target Center. So it's not only a great place to come for uh, – Cheryl's show, but it's a great place to pregame when you're, before you go to a Lynx game. It's 10 South South 5th Street in Minneapolis. But again, just Google it. You'll find it. It's not hard to find. Uh, and and you know, not only do they do a lot of late night stuff that's ticketed uh, for our show, it won't be ticketed. Just come in and uh, you know have a meal or have a beer. Uh, but they also have a really good lunch. So if you're somebody who works in downtown Minneapolis, stop by, try out their lunch menu. I did the other day. It was very good. We appreciate them partnering with us. Uh, before we get to a lot of very interesting topics, including how Title IX has affected the women's coaching ranks, uh, what, is she, what Cheryl's doing, how she's scouting, how she does go about scouting, and a few other uh, tidbits, including Simone Augustus being named to a National uh, Hall of Fame, I uh, also want to thank our other sponsors, Lori Ramsey from SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com, Shelly Boyan Bream from Shelly Bean, the Sports Queen Sports Books. We also have a special Bite Squad uh, offer this week for the, the state hockey tournament. Use the promo code hockey at Bite Squad or the Bite Squad app to get 10% off your order. And if you haven't ordered from Bite Squad before, you can get your first delivery free by using the promo code Talk North. Uh, thanks to our producer, Brandon Morton. We'll tell you more about our sponsors later. So are you allowed to tell me where you are right now, Cheryl? Sure. I'm happy to tell you I'm down in Greenville, South Carolina at the SEC tournament, uh, mostly to escape the, uh, the the weather that's on its way for the weekend in Minneapolis. Smart. <laughs> uh, no, but the SEC is is, uh, is always a good tournament to attend. Uh, this is such a great time of year. So whether you're SEC, ACC, Pac-12, it doesn't matter where you are, Big Ten. Uh, it's just a fun environment, and you know, and, and the players, and the, you know, and the schools, the way that they travel, and you know, it's just a, it, it's fun to evaluate during this time. You can see who rises up in in tough situations, and you know, the, the difficulty I think in conference tournaments is that teams know each other so well that that sometimes you know, scoring two points is is, is a big time challenge. So uh, I'm sure all of these these teams are, you know, anxious to advance and and get to the NCAA tournament where maybe their opponents don't know them as as, as well. One mistake people make with when they're talking to me is they assume because I'm a sports writer, I love all sports at every level, and not really true. It's to me, it's more like in my job makes me more think more like a movie critic. I love the good movies, and I hate really, really hate the bad movies. <laughs> As a basketball lifer, do you enjoy all basketball and all levels of basketball, or are you a little more discerning? Well, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm working, I prefer the the, the top notch basketball. Uh, but I do like going to the support, you know, people to, you know, whether it's a high school game or or maybe a college that doesn't necessarily have prospects for the WNBA. Uh, so it all depends on what I'm doing. You know, I think in terms of, you know, easy on the eyes. You know, it, I think John Wooden said it best. You know, that the the top of the women's game is you know is is really enjoyable to watch. And you know, I probably you know share his view. Absolutely. Uh, and why did you choose the SEC tournament? Well, I, I'd say in this case, it probably has the most prospects that I don't feel like as a staff um, we hit as much in the regular season. You know, there are other tournaments that, you know, would be kind of redundant if we were there. So, um, you know, just it's where our journeys brought us throughout the, um, you know, November, December, January, February. And so we thought just to kind of, you know, kind of dot the I and cross the T's that, that we better, uh, you know, be thorough in our evaluations. Yeah, I've 
spent half my life talking to general managers and scouts about evaluation and how you choose and, you know, different draft philosophies for a long time. Was Sid Hartman one of them? uh, No, no, because I like to get smarter. (laughs) Uh, that was mean. I, you know what? I, I retract that statement. Uh, I don't want to pick on Sid at, at this point, uh, but uh, no. Uh, I dragged you there. That's my. Sid, yeah. Well, Sid. Sid would always. Well, here's. The, it's, Sid would have a very simple drafting philosophy. You had to be. You have to be born in the state of Minnesota and never leave. Then he will draft. You. <laughs> but as you know, his his admonition to people like Tyus Jones and and uh, Khalid Elamine or everybody else. Hey, you leave. Hey. You, <clears throat> You leave the state, you'll never work in this town again, okay? He's actually That's told high school kids that. He's told really? high school kids, you leave, you're never going to get a job here again, you know? Wow, wow. Uh, so, but, you know, longer, more, more answer, this answer is more to the point. I find it fascinating how philosophies have evolved a little bit, where I remember when I first started covering pro sports, what they always said was, you have to take the best player available no matter what. And now, it, you know, last time Spielman gave a, a real long talk about his draft philosophy, he said, it's kind of true, but it's really, for him, more in tiers. So, in other words, you group players together in a tier, and then from that tier, you might take the player who best fits your needs, who might not necessarily be the best athlete. So, I don't know if you have a philosophy, if you just kind of, uh, you just kind of go with where your eyes take you. Well, I, th- I think in the first round, there's a, there's a clear-cut philosophy uh, that we've adhered to, which is best player available. I think there was probably one draft where we said, okay, this is probably not the best player available, but she's really the best fit. And we took her maybe a few spots higher than than what people anticipated. And that was Devereaux Peters. Uh, but she was just such a perfect fit to what our, our, our team was doing and where our team was at that time. Uh, we didn't think, you know, that that other players would fit as well as her. So that was probably the lone time in the first round that we that we didn't adhere to, you know, the idea of best player available regardless of position. Uh, and that's probably where we are today, um, you know, in terms of our team. That, you know, we we have a really good handle on, you know, the the top six or eight that we know uh, kind of will be in our in our range, and we have a really good feel for all of them. I think in this particular draft. Uh, the best player available narrative is very subjective uh, because I think that, you know, somebody you get at six probably had an argument at one time for them to be in the top two. Uh, and it's just kind of the, you know, the way this draft class uh, has gone, that there's a, there's a lot of good talent, you know, not necessarily generational players like a Brianna Stewart, but some really good players. And so, you know, the, the perfect marriage is best player available that also fills a need. Uh, and so we're going to, we're going to swing for that. And, and, you know, we don't control the five ahead of us, but if it lands that way, then, you know, then, then we'll feel uh, really good about it. Uh, from there, you know, I, I've always kind of said, you know, you're going to be kicking yourself if you don't take best player available, even if it, if it's not a position that you need, uh, figure it out. This is a, this is a good player, figure it out. And that, that'll be our mindset uh, at number six in the second and third rounds. I'd say it's a little bit different. Uh, we have three picks in the second round. Uh, we, we think there's some, there could be, could be some decent players there. And, and so, you know, we could, we could go positional need at that point or, you know, so that, that's, you're more open, you know, to the idea, uh, it doesn't have to be best player available because when you get to that point, again, what is the difference between, you know, somebody's drafted 16 and maybe 20, you know, it's just kind of, uh, I guess a very, very subjective and, you know, that'll be our, our mindset. We certainly have some needs, uh, as a basketball team, you know, that we, we feel like we can improve on. And, and so, you know, we'll be hunting those, those things and the players that we're pursuing and, and uh, yeah, we'll have to get some, we'll have to be lucky. Cause I think at six, you'd never feel like you're quite high enough. <laughs> you always feel like uh, mm-hmm. when you're picking six that, you know, that maybe there's five great players. And, um, but I think in this case, I think we're, we're really excited about, I think we're going to get a really, really quality um, prospect and uh, they're going to become a pretty, pretty big part of our team. Uh, I'm going to ask you about the concept of pressure uh, in your current situation. I do want to thank Lori Ramsey of SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com. Go to SuccessfulMarketingGroup.com slash Cheryl Reeve to get a free 45-minute action plan. Make 2019 a huge success, and uh, Lori can help you with that because she knows how to get you found on uh, Google and other searches. Uh, she knows how to, have, how to help you get onto the first page of those search, search excuse me, I'm stumbling, searches. Uh, she can help any kind of uh, 
any kind of business from heating and cooling companies to dentists or plastic surgeons. And uh, she can do it at 50 to 60 percent less than the big agencies uh, that probably wouldn't work with a small business anyway. So if you're a small business, if you have to stay within a budget, Lori Ramsey is the person to work with. Successfulmarketinggroup.com slash Cheryl Reeve. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, uh, remind you to download before you listen to the, to the podcast or any of the podcasts across the talknorth.com platform. Uh, follow us on Twitter, talk North pod for live show times and everything else. And if you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach the talk North podcast at gmail.com. So this is different. You know, uh, now you're a general manager of a team that is not going to have two great players who help make you what you were and you have more picks, uh, do you feel pressure? Do you feel uh, urgency uh, around the draft? Yeah. No, because um, I don't. I, I think that we would have been in the same place with the draft, uh, even if we uh, we we had the, all the players returning. Now, picking six was not something that you know this this group was you know kind of used to doing with with the level of success that they had. Uh, but last year's team, you know, uh, we are what or we were what you know the the record said we were right. So eighteen and sixteen, and we were very middle of the pack and. And I think that um, there's not a player you're going to pick at six that is is going to kind of replace either a Lindsey Whale or a Maya Moore. Um, I think it's more about, you know, the number six player is going to be a good player that's going to, um, you know, be a part of the team, you know, be a piece, if you will. And, um, you know, the, the Maya Moores or the Lindsey Whalens, you know, those, those are elite level players and uh, you don't just replace them, you know, in, in a draft where there's not a generational player. You were on CNN earlier this week. I caught it, uh, and I've, you know, I've done I've done hits like that before. Obviously, you, you've probably done it more often than I have. But it is I don't know if people realize it is kind of a weird deal. At least it was for me that you go into some random studio downtown, usually like an extra studio for one of the TV stations, and you sit in front of a a, a backdrop of your city that is, is obviously fake. And you talk to somebody you can't see. Uh, so tell me, tell me, just tell me what your experience, and then let's talk about the content. Well, well you nailed it. Uh, but I thought the scenery was real. There was a bunch of snow, so I, I, <laughs> okay, I thought it was really real. reflected. It was real. Uh, but it was exactly what you said. You know the. Um, you know, in the CCO building, there's, there's a studio satellite studio and, um, our, our PR, uh, uh, manager, Aaron Freeman had, had done these hits, you know, through with ESPN, et cetera, with, with some of the players. Uh, it was my first time, you know, doing that. Like you said, it was, uh, you know, you got these, these machines look like cameras in the room and I'm waiting for them to turn them on so I could see, mm-hmm. who, you know, who I'm talking to. And like you said, it, it, it's, uh, it's not how it works. And so, I look at CNN really differently now or these interviews because now you understand what the person is probably doing, you know, kind of behind the camera that, uh, you know, I guess I never really uh, understood before. It's awkward. It is. So tell me about the content. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me, where did it come from? You know, because it certainly uh, was a bit old news, uh, but it, it, it kind of, you know, was brought up again because uh, the White House uh, honored a 1AA champion football team. Mm -hmm. And so then there was a writer uh, for the Washington Post that wrote a story about the absence of championship women's teams for solo visits to the White House. And so that story was written, and, you know, I suspect that CNN probably saw that. And, you know, they reached out to us, uh, you know, the day that I I did the hit and um, just said, hey, you know, we'd love for you to come on and talk about this. So... Um, you know, we did, and, and it was, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it brings me back to the time when it all happened, when it was very fresh, and I remember the mindset, you know, of our team, and, you know, you're, you're certainly disappointed because you, you know what it's supposed to look like when when President Obama or, you know, I was in Detroit, you know, where we, where we you know, the same thing with Bill Beer, you know, the president calls you and, and you know, invites you for a visit, and, uh, and, and regardless of politics, you know, because, you know, you don't always agree with the person that's in the White House. And uh, this is just what champions do. And so it was a chance to go on there and talk about that. And, you know, obviously the slight of, you know, our team, you know, the Seattle Storm and even the L.A. Sparks in 2016, they were technically the first WNBA team under this administration. So uh, that was the content. Um, you know, I sort of felt like uh, I had a responsibility to represent a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of, lot, you know, female athletes everywhere. And, you know, it, it is an oversight. Um, it is not something this, this president should be doing, you know, he needs to be a leader. And as, as we've seen, you know, sometimes we get disappointed in the, in the ways that he decides to lead. And 
um, you know, I felt like I was being pulled into, um, you know, maybe wanting to say something that 